I think we might see the first big airline start to furlough pilots next year, and it's not at all who I would have expected a couple of years ago. According to this Reuters report, UPS is in some financial trouble and asked 167 pilots to retire early. Now there's a difference between early retirements and furlough. A furlough basically means the airline is temporarily firing you. Asking pilots to retire early usually will apply to pilots that maybe are 62 and over. It happened during COVID. When COVID happened, the airlines didn't know how things were gonna work out. So they told some of these pilots, hey, if you wanna retire early, go ahead and retire. And that helped them to be able to save some money but they have to pay these pilots in order to leave. Now, furloughs were really common in 2008 through 2010. You would see articles like this where pilots were losing their jobs. And when pilots get furloughed, it's really big news because pilots are very high profile. Usually they earn a pretty good income, but there's a lot of people that work around the pilots in order to allow us to fly the planes. Look at this article from 2008 where American Airlines planned to cut 7,000 employees but this support staff isn't needed if the pilots aren't flying. Historically, cargo flying has always been more stable. A piece of advice I got when I was a brand new pilot was from a retired UPS pilot. He said, look, you can go fly passenger flying. It's gonna be cooler in a lot of ways, but cargo flying is always gonna be in demand because freight always needs to move. And in 2008, 2009, 2010, you would see articles like this where people would say they were going to go on a staycation. It was called staycation because you had a little bit of money that you wanted to spend and do something with your friends and family, but you didn't want to spend all that money to travel overseas and pay for a nice hotel and all the other expenses of a long trip. They do staycations and they drive an hour or two and go do something there. So that's why that guy suggested to me sticking with cargo because people can avoid taking those expensive airfare trips, but at the end of the day, cargo, when you're ordering food or ordering things that you need to do for your work, that freight is going to keep moving. So cargo historically has been more stable. However, this might be the canary in the coal mine, as they say, the indication of bad things about to happen. You've seen in some of my vlogs, in the back of my planes, I have a lot of electronics and people need those things to work. And in a lot of cases, there are food that you just can't really see back here. You would be surprised with the amount and certain types of food that you eat. You had no idea where it came from, but if you look at the packaging on some of the fresh fruit or produce that you get, it will say from, and it'll be some place far away. A lot of times it didn't come on a boat. It wouldn't have been able to survive that boat ride. And so they put it on a plane, which makes it expensive, but that's just the demand and the universal world that we live in. People are used to being able to get whatever fruit year round. And sometimes that fruit has to be grown in other places and flown in. And from the US, we fly a lot and export a lot here. Sometimes that's on boats, but sometimes it's on plane and the type of plane that it's typically on is a freighter. And while being a freight pilot isn't really as glamorous as being a passenger pilot, a lot of pilots decide they want to go fly passengers. However, those scenes from Catch Me If You Can just aren't really happening anymore. You start seeing scenes like this on a daily basis. And I realized, I guess flying around the world with my hoodie on is just about as glamorous as having to hear about two passengers in the back of my plane fighting over who gets the armrest. And in case you're wondering, it's the guy in the middle seat. The middle seat gets both armrests. That's just the way it works. But like a lot of things going on right now, it seems like I'm living in opposite land because while the passenger airlines just can't hire enough pilots, a lot of the freight airlines have stopped hiring altogether and you're about to see the financials and see things are getting a little bit shaky for them. According to this 2023 message to investors, UPS had about 100 billion in revenue in 2022 and a profit of over 13 billion. Now keep in mind, as soon as the pandemic started, freight rates exploded because the ports were closed, airline passenger flying wasn't happening, and at the end of the day, freight has to move. Something that you may not know is that when you're on a lot of your international flights, one of the reasons the airlines charge you extra for taking on your three huge heavy suitcases so you can do three outfit changes like Beyonce on your vacation is that that reduces the amount of weight they can take in cargo. That cargo is how airlines make a lot of money on these international flights. So when you take a bunch of bags, they can take less payload, less cargo weight, and they get paid by the weight of what they move. So next time you're looking at your plane, you might see them starting to put canisters in the back of the plane, and that is additional revenue in cargo that they're making money on. Here is the earnings report that American Airlines released a couple of months ago. 
you'll notice right here on this line is the cargo revenue. And you'll notice the parentheses, which means it's a decrease. So essentially they're down 40% of their revenue cargo. Now different airlines gave away different contracts as soon as the pandemic started happening because they weren't sure when flying was gonna pick up again and they had to fulfill the contracts that they had signed. So they had given some of those away. However, if they're having a reduction in the amount of cargo, that means that other freight carriers are also seeing the same thing. Now, I just showed you that in 2002, UPS had 100 billion in revenue. In 2023, UPS planned they would actually be down to 97 billion this year, which is never really a good thing when you predict that the following year, you're gonna be down $3 billion, but things started to get worse. This is a recent report from UPS, and you can see now they're actually planning on being at 93 billion. And that's assuming the rest of this year goes as planned and I don't think it's gonna go that way. The profits are down and the revenue is down. Now revenue matters somewhat, but at the end of the day, profit is what matters the most. If you come to work for me and I say, hey, I'm gonna pay you $100 for the day, but it costs you $30 in Uber rides and $20 in food to work from that day, you only have $50 in profit. So it doesn't really sound that great. I jumped online and I downloaded the reports from 2022 and 2023 that I could download, and here's what I noticed. In the first six months of 2022 and 2023, the 2023 revenue was down 4.2 billion and the profits were down 1.5 billion. That's a lot. Of course, everything is relative. If you're a politician, you might spend 1.5 billion before lunchtime and not think anything of it. But if you're a for-profit business, a decrease of 1.5 billion is a problem. One of the things that's gonna be driving the revenue down even further is that in 2023, there was concerns that the UPS drivers were gonna be going on strike. And the CEO said that a lot of consumers had switched to the US Postal Service or FedEx and that the number of packages were down almost 10%. And if UPS isn't able to win back that business, they're gonna be down probably under $90 billion because in the last quarter, the last three months of the year, UPS tends to generate another 10 to 15% than they do on every other quarter. And if people aren't shipping packages, it's gonna be a problem. So now the company is running on these thinner margins and the CEO said that they were gonna pay drivers an average of $170,000 a year with everything included. Now I've heard a lot of drivers say they're not gonna get anything close to $170,000 and management and people don't always see eye to eye on how compensation actually totals out to be. But either way, there was a big raise it seems and now they had these reduced revenues, reduced profits, and the impact of that is gonna be showing later on this year, especially with the amount of money and revenue that went to UPS and FedEx, that's gonna hurt their bottom line even more. And one of the reasons that I think people are gonna be shipping less packages is because of this article right here. In October of this year, people are going to have to start making their student loan payments again. And according to this report, that's gonna be somewhere between two to $300 per person. So with all the inflation that's happened these last several years, a lot of people have ended up replacing that money that they used to spend for their student loan payments with some type of other thing. New house, house payments, new car, new car payments, increased insurance costs because everything has jumped up a lot. So that two to $300 or possibly four or $500, depending on the household, that debt has now already been allocated to something else, which means you don't have that money to spend on things like gifts when it comes in the holidays, which is the last quarter of this year. And that's why reports like this are starting to show as headlines that people aren't spending nearly as much money. Realize that when you order something online as a gift, a lot of times that's three package movements. It's coming from the manufacturer to the Amazon facility or whatever facility you're buying it from. That's one shipment of that small package. Then from that to your house, that's a second shipment of that package. And then you're gonna split up some of the things and different gifts to go to different people. You're gonna wrap that up for the holidays and you're gonna send that to somebody else. So that single item has now been shipped three different times in an airline like UPS or FedEx, they're gonna make money on each one of those shipments. If you're not buying that thing, that means it's not moving maybe at all, but definitely not three times. And UPS could start going back to the pilots and ask more to take these early retirements like they did here earlier this year. What's important to remember is those pilots that are leaving early aren't just walking away and leaving that money on the table. The airline is paying them in order to leave. 
Airlines usually work on a seniority basis, which means if you've been there for 10 years, they can't let you go first, even though you're making a lot more than a first year pilot. The pilots that are on their first year are at risk of getting furloughed and losing their jobs temporarily, but they're making the least amount of money. So what airlines will try to do is say, hey, pilots making lots of money. How about I give you a little bit less money, but you leave a little bit earlier and they have some mathematical system that's way beyond addition and subtraction, which is kind of where I live in mental math. Luckily for these junior pilots, if they get furloughed, there's a lot of airlines like American here that are trying to hire 4,000 pilots in just this year alone. So it's very strange because cargo used to always be the very safe play. You used to always be confident that you would have a job. And now things are starting to change where the cargo pilots aren't having the cargo because people aren't buying anything. Now, I haven't looked at the financials of some of the other big airlines, but if people aren't buying those things right now because all their money's been spent in inflation and increased costs and then now student loan payments and they're starting to save or not spend as much because they don't have the same amount of discretionary income maybe that's going to trickle around back to the passenger airlines i haven't looked at their financials yet but it is weird because cargo typically is the safe play for pilots and you may have already heard about some of these smaller cargo airlines like western global recently declaring bankruptcy. Keep in mind that UPS and Western Global are very different business models, so the likelihood of UPS going bankrupt anytime soon is not very likely. However, that additional cargo not being out there in order to be picked up makes a problem because if UPS had a reduction in the amount of boxes that you and your everyday person is shipping, they could make that up by picking up other cargo while they're going to that place. But you can see from American, from Western Global going out of business, that additional cargo isn't out there for them to pick up. And when you're talking about being down 10% in overall revenue, when you're talking about billions of dollars, that's a problem, especially with the increased costs that they're having for labor, for truckers, for all the additional employees, for the pilots. They're having increased costs, reduced revenue, that I think is going to be a problem, but we won't really know until the beginning of 2024 when we get all the numbers in. But my suspicion, it's not going to be very good. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, keep the blue side up.